Absolutely. So um, we may not have the uh, connection with those two guys and, and the two of us um, together, but um, we may just have to, um, well, let me try one more thing here. We may be able to get it to work here. But if not, we'll, uh, we'll obviously do, do this to, uh, together. So, um, so yeah, I, I kind of put out the question um, to, to the Twitter um, you know, Aggie Twitter is, uh, you know, is, d- does anybody see weaknesses with USC? What do you think about this USC game? How confident are you and everything? And it's kind of a mixed thing because, um, uh, I, I guess the best way to explain it is I think Aggie fans have been burned in the past by, you know, going into Tennessee and being over, overly confident and, and thinking, you know, oh, we can go up to, uh, to Washington and, and beat Washington, and then these games have uh, haven't haven't been wins. Obviously, Utah State hasn't had a, a Pac-12 win on the road or Power Five win on the road um, to speak of for for a long time. Even this five-year run, um, there hasn't been that signature uh, road win at USC or at Washington or at Tennessee. So I think some people are a little bit uh, worried about that, but um, you can hear me, Ryan, right? I can, yeah. Okay, good. So um, so I think they're a little bit worried, but at the same time, it almost looks like the uh, the problems with USC are kind of the the mental problems or maybe whether it's leadership or anything. I think it's kind of similar to last year. Um, I think Aggie fans were really frustrated with that that team last year, just the the leadership and the and the mental toughness. So is that kind of a fair statement, or what? How would you how would you rate this this USC team as far as that bouncing back and everything? Well, well I mean that's the big question: Can they bounce back? And you just don't know at this point. But if you want to look for weaknesses, I mean there were so many that you got to see uh, when USC played Alabama. Now. You know, Utah State's not going to have the same defensive front that, that Alabama does. But this was a team, this USC offense, um, not really much of an identity when you look at it. They had 10 straight drives. Uh, that In those 10 drives, total of minus 6 yards over the 10 drive span, 31 total plays. So they averaged 3.1 play per drive. You're not going to do, do a whole lot uh, if that's what your offense is doing. So I think... If I'm Utah State and I'm looking at that, there's there's definitely opportunities to, to disrupt the offensive line. And really, you do that, you're going to disrupt the entire offense. And if you're able to make some big plays, and, and the USC defense, I thought, played pretty well against Alabama, but then had some colossal breakdowns where they were forcing negative plays, but then they would give up a big touchdown. So there's big plays to be had. And I think on special teams as well, there were certainly some weaknesses there. Um, it's not... You know, if you look at the talent and you go, oh, wow, that guy's a four-star, that guy's a five-star, that's right. still there. Um, but they didn't look like they were playing up to their potential. It didn't look like the offensive line with what a lot of people think have, you know, at least a few future NFL guys on it um, didn't look like uh, – they didn't look like that. So I think there's a lot of opportunities there. Now, it's never easy. I mean, uh, you know, I, I know the Mountain West pretty well. I did, you know, covered some Fresno State stuff the last couple of years. Um, you – it's not easy, but there's certainly opportunities um, for something like that to happen. If you say, hey, I'm playing Ohio State on the road, what are the odds of winning that game? Not very good. Not good, very good for anybody. Uh, but this is one of those opportunities. If you're a Utah State fan, you look at, could USC be reeling? They could. Or they'd be they'd so, upset so upset that, that they bounce, bounce back, 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 back and play really well. well, well, play well, well their head. Head. Um, that's a possibility, too. But with that game, the Alabama game, uh, still lingering on their minds. And then the, the Pac-12 schedule with road games against Stanford and Utah, uh, six days apart, one on a Saturday, one on a Friday night. There's certainly potential for overlooking this game, uh, being some sort of sandwich game. And you just don't know how they're going to recover from the, the just beat down that they got uh, at Jerry World and, and down in Arlington. So um, I... You know, you don't ever want to say, oh, this is definitely a win or a loss or whatever. I mean, it's college football. Anything can happen. But if I was a Utah State fan, I would definitely look at this as, hey, this is a pretty good opportunity if 
the Aggies are able to play at a high level, up to their potential, you are definitely going to put pressure on a USC team that didn't score a touchdown last week. Um, so, if you, you know, we could see, I think both teams have the potential to play up to, you know, high, uh, high level or lower levels. Um, I think Utah State would have to play a pretty good game, put some pressure back on USC, and then you have to see how they respond to this one. But certainly not a saying that all hope is lost or anything. USC looks like a reeling team right now. So if you're, you know, if this is, you want an opportunity to play them, this seems like the perfect week. Yeah. And, and if you, if you want to kind of segment it out as far as the, um, you know, the, the leadership and the mental state and, and obviously the physical attributes and the physicalness of, of the team and the talent of the team, it almost sounds dumb to even, even can compare the two teams or, or the star rankings and everything, you know, that's almost laughable. But at the same time, that coaching, you never know, that coaching uh, could could play a huge factor as well. I mean, last year against Washington, it was plain as day that, that Coach Peterson outcoached and uh, and made the, the, you know, made the plays and called the plays and the fake field goal and different things like that. He did. He took advantage of Utah State's weaknesses and so forth, and that's the only reason why Washington beat Utah State last year, in my opinion, is coaching. So, how much confidence, or how much do you think um, you know that coaching could could play a factor on Saturday? Oh, huge! And I, I'm a big believer in systems, and um, you know, to co- not just. I mean, recruiting is big, and I think when you're talking to USC fans, they worry about recruiting more than anything. That's why, I mean, I don't mm-hmm. think there's probably a single player on Utah State that USC even offered or recruited, uh, but that happens a lot, you know. But how do those guys come in and play? You get a three-star, and he plays like a four-star. That's a lot better than a five-star that plays like a three-star, you know. And, that, exactly. and USC seems to have a lot of those. And I think it's not just uh, game plan and, and how you call the plays and things like that, but really being able to – develop guys and a guy comes in and I, I see this up and down the mountain west you're recruiting guys and they not only do they have, when they arrive you want them to play at a certain level but you have to get better they have to be guys that uh, they play at this level when they're a freshman and you teach you coach them up teach them up and, and they're playing better by the time they're seniors you had no idea that they were a two-star that nobody wanted they, now they're um, you know a, a stud and you know maybe they Maybe they don't get drafted, but they're signed as unrestricted free agent and make a roster. And you, you're not seeing that at USC. You're not seeing guys get better. So certainly on the coaching side, um, I mean, there's potential there, for, of course, but uh, we, didn't, we saw a complete mismatch. Um, if you think of, like, the top five programs of all time in college football, the AP just did a poll earlier this year. Or not a poll, but a statistical analysis. So from 19, I think it was 36 on, they gave points for every year you were in the AP top 25. And Alabama and USC were both top five all time as far as being in the poll the most and all that stuff. Right. Um, but if you, if you ever saw a, a matchup between top five programs, on paper, there would have never been a bigger mismatch coaching-wise than what you saw Saturday with Nick Saban arguably being the greatest college football coach of all time going against Clay Helton, who's a rookie, like, no, you know, no resume to speak of. I mean, when top five programs clash, you usually don't see that big of a discrepancy. And it was so evident uh, when you watch the game. And uh, even before the game, we got there about three hours early in the press box, looked down. The Alabama sideline is completely set up, benches, tables, all everything you wanted was in the perfect spot. It was meticulous. And I looked over the USC side, and there was nothing. There was not even a bench out yet. It was so just, it was a microcosm of what was going to go on in the game. One team's been there 10 times before and done it. They know what to expect. Another team, you have a rookie head coach and a bunch of coaches that are doing jobs for the first time. Uh, so, yes, it's a long answer to your question. I think coaching is a huge factor. And if, if Utah State wins this game, coaching is going to be a major part of it. You're not going to go up and down athlete for athlete and go, that guy's better than that guy. But this group of athletes would play better and more as a team and more organized than the other group of athletes. Right. And the way I put it, too, it's it's great to have solid Mountain West players. You know, it's great to uh, 
Let me make sure my uh, my audio is not going crazy here. Um, you know, it's great to have solid Mount West players. It's great to uh, develop players and and have young players that that should be should be good or have potential or you know by the end of the season should be pretty solid. Um, but at the same time, to beat USC, I think there's going to have to be some big um, there's there's going to have to be some big big plays. You know, there's going to have to be some um, some some players step up, some coaching. Um, you know, big, big plays, that kind of thing. I, I don't think there's any doubt that something has to, uh, to happen. It's, there's a reason why it's a 16 point, uh, game according to, to Vegas, right? So yeah, there's gotta be something. But, yeah, but that's more on reputation than anything. And that's looking yeah. athlete to athlete. And I think if you've watched this USC team over the last few years, uh, I don't want to be overcritical of the team, but I'm just saying, when USC wins, like, they beat Utah pretty badly last year. They, they, they smacked UCLA around. But they got beat up by a whole bunch of other teams. When USC wins, it's because they come out and, like, whatever their game plan is, it works. And it's not a team that's going to, like, struggle at first. If you watch the Florida State game, they look like crap, you know. And then they come back from a 22-point deficit. This is not the kind of team that USC is. So if Utah State comes out, so watch the first quarter. It'll be the most important quarter to me. If USC just looks good and they're winning, it, it looks like then that's probably going to happen, you know. Um, but if Utah State's competitive early and maybe they, you know, get a punt return or something big or a force a fumble, um, watch because this is not a team we've seen on the USC side get punched in the mouth and respond and bounce back. It's kind of one of those teams where it just has to work from 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 beginning to end. So it doesn't really work in the beginning. And you're a Utah State fan, you probably feel pretty good about what's going on because this is just not the kind of team that starts off from behind and is able to figure it out and make adjustments and bounce back. When this team wins and they look good doing it, it's from from the you know opening gun on. And if not, they have trouble. Yeah, and uh, Coach Wells even made kind of mention of uh, you know you don't want to you don't want to go into USC and, and get behind. You know, there's 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 not a lot of uh, examples of a team going into whether it's the Coliseum or another, you know, a solid Pac-12 team or, or whatever. There's not a lot of examples of, of a team going in and and playing flat and then coming back. You know, that's that's not a recipe for uh, for success. So. Um, so, yeah, I absolutely agree that start is going to be going to be huge to watch and. And just to see, um, you know, where those mismatches are, because you know, right before we brought you on, we were just mentioning that that there are some weaknesses on that uh, rebuilt linebacker core. You know, Utah State had to replace two third round draft picks uh, in the NFL with Kyler Fackrell, Nick Vigil. Um, the year before that, they had a, a guy, you know, that that was on a roster. So they they've had, you know four or five linebackers make it to the NFL the last couple of years. So it's, it's, uh, it's something that they have to replace, and they're either playing guys that have kind of been sitting behind those guys uh, for a couple of years, or they're playing those freshman, sophomore that, that really haven't been proven or, or anything like that. What, is, um, what do you think that matchup will be like as far as the tight ends, the running backs out of the backfield, that kind of thing? Yeah, it'll be interesting to watch because they definitely, you know, on the Utah State side, some unproven uh, linebackers you have to worry about. Um, you, you saw the Alabama front, what they did to USC, and that they got generated a lot of pressure with the front four. And not that Utah State's going to have the same kind of you know, defensive lineman that, that Alabama has, but if you're able to do that, and there was a lot of confusion with this USC offensive line. So I think uh, the key is going to be watching those lines can Utah State generate pressure without having to bring the house and just, you know, with the front four, not that you have to do it every play, but kind of just, just cause a disruption. Alabama caused a disruption to a, you know, the nth degree. It was crazy. But do, you know, some portion of that, I think it should help. Now, USC kind of kept in their tight ends a lot to block. Uh, they were on, used as little um, outlets. They didn't really let these guys go down the field a lot much, which is kind of, you know, if – USC fans saw them do that more, stretch the field with the tight ends uh, in the spring. And we saw it over the summer, too, in the summer workouts. But it wasn't happening 
at fall camp.